Oh wow, the workshop is a mess, but anyways, we're gonna chuck this one into the car now. Uh, but before we do that, I thought I'd show you some of the cool stuff we have fabricated to make this happen. So, uh, uh, this is just the two uh, Nissan Leaf stacks um, flipped on top of each other. And uh, we have some custom bracing going here to hold the service disconnect switch, so this was kind of nice. And um, this, uh, or, or I might quickly explain the reason why we kept them, because these two uh, connectors that contain the balancing leads, they will connect to the rear pack here, to these two connectors that are here. So by keeping these two as they are, they remove the need for any custom wiring harness modifications. So uh, we also have the contactors mounted here on top and uh, the rest of the lead will then exit from here and go towards the motor. But yeah, we will lift this thing in. Wish us luck. Okay, so half of the battle is won. We now have the pack inside the car and <laughs> I am so thankful that this vehicle has a targa roof so it was possible to remove that. I don't know how, how else we could have gotten this thing inside. But uh, we are still a bit off target so we need to shuffle this one around. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so after we were throwing the battery around a lot, I uh, hooked it up to a 12-volt uh, battery and a, a Bluetooth dongle. Uh, that way we can now take a look at the battery stats. And uh, I am very glad to report that uh, the battery is working. Uh, it's currently sitting at 65% uh, state of charge. So excellent storing voltage. This battery has been sitting for some time. and. Um, yeah, as you can see, the state of health is, it's not bad, but it's, it's, yeah, it's average or below average for a 30 kilowatt hour pack. And that's the reason why I chose this battery for this build, because it couldn't have gone into a customer car. But uh, anyways, now that we know that the battery works, I can tidy this up and um, yeah, continue with it. Okay, so with the battery securely mounted, uh, we can start working on connecting the battery and the motor. So here's my game plan. Here is the stock cable that goes into the PDM and I have chopped uh, some the ends of it and I've cut them at two different lengths uh, because when I splice a longer cable onto it you don't want to make these two points right n n next to each other because that would like increase the, the chance that something gets shorted out. And while I have this cable here, I can also show that uh, the lugs I have, uh, well, if this thing wants to focus, uh, the lugs are crimped in place with this uh, special tool that is meant for yeah, crimping this thick cable. This is uh, 50 uh, square millimeter cabling. And uh, yeah, I, I borrowed the tool from a contactor here in Vasa in order to do this job because I did not have, have the tool, so big shout out to those guys. And uh, apart from that, uh, here I have some high voltage cabling from another project. Uh, this was also donated to me for another project, but I've taken the, the cables off what it originally was connected to and I intend to use this between the battery and motor. So, 
Now I have showed you all the parts and now I'm gonna fit them to the car. Okay, check this out. So uh, here is the set of contactors now connected to a positive and ne negative high voltage line. And uh, we got these two, these uh, strain reliefs going here. And we also have uh, strain reliefs at the bottom. And these have been siliconed in so there won't be any uh, water intrusion into the cabin area. And uh, these high voltage lines, I can show you here quickly, uh, they're not permanently mounted yet. We just have them going uh, underneath the vehicle temporarily so that we can do some test runs. And uh, uh, the cable was a bit short, it wasn't really optimal, but uh, at least they are extending all the way over here. So now we will uh, connect the other ones and mount the power distribution module back on top here. Okay, so the high voltage cabling is now spliced in and we will now lift the PDM on top. And we have a PDM. So, <laughs> some of you might notice that uh, this will not fit. I mean, when the hood will close, it will hit the PDM. But uh, we don't care about that because we just want to see this vehicle start. But in the long run, the PDM will have to be moved uh, here to the right side. So the cable extends to this place. But for now, we'll run it like this. So now I'm gonna connect the high voltage line to the PDM. Okay, so the PDM is in place and we have hooked up all the orange high voltage cabling. Uh, the charging port is also here. It just It's just lying here because we need that for testing. Uh, we will extend the cable and put it in the back where the fuel flap used to be later on. Uh, we have also... Yeah, we've sealed everything up because this is like ready for testing now. Uh, we also did some checks with the multimeter to make sure that we got the positive and the negative on the right side. And here's a pro tip if you're doing this uh, type of swap. The positive cable you can measure the ones that, that uh, connect here uh, to the motor. Positive is on the right side and negative is on the left side. This is also in the manual for the Resolve EV controller. But we just verified that by taking the multimeter and running it to the back, back of the battery. And yeah, verifying the polarity. So uh, the PDM part is done. So uh, now we will move on to the 12 volt side of things. And voila! Here is a 12 volt battery, lead acid. Uh, we took this one from a lawn mower because it was quite small. Because we need something very small in this space. And yeah, this fits perfectly here. So now all that's needed is to take this uh, 12 volt side and uh, connect it to the PDM. This is the 12 volt output. And here is where you also ground the PDM. And that should go to, to 12 volt battery negative. So I have actually the cables I have started with here. So it's the same style of, of cables here, so these crimped ones. But uh, I think maybe this is it for this video. All the high voltage stuff is done. So uh, with all that orange stuff out of the way, we can finally move on to the part that most of you have been waiting for. And that is wiring up the Resolve EV controller and yeah, going for the first drive. So stay tuned for the next episode. I would like to thank all the Patreon supporters for making this build happen. See you in the next one.